Hi guys, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Dan Richworth, I'm the author of the book Papa Kilo, a true story from a Suzy Air pilot in Indonesia. I'm also a former pilot, instructor and manager from Suzy Air. I've spent four years flying for Suzy Air, during which I also worked in pilot training and recruitment. I left Suzy Air a while back and I'm now a Boeing 737 captain, so I'm in a fairly good position to offer advice to aspiring pilots. Now the reason why I'm making these videos is because I get asked the same question again and again from many aspiring pilots and that question is of course, how do you get a job with Suzy Air? Since I left Suzy Air over four years ago, there have been two fundamental changes to the recruitment process. The first change involves a third party company known as Aero Synergy becoming involved in the recruitment process. Back when I was working for Suzy Air, we conducted the written exams and simulator assessments ourselves. This has now unfortunately changed, however personally I believe that this will be a temporary change. I suspect that Suzy Air may well go back to the old system at a later date. I'll explain why in the next video. The second fundamental change happened just very recently and has perhaps come as a massive shock to everyone including myself. According to the careers section of the Suzy Air website, they're no longer looking for first officers on the caravan, only direct entry captains. Now personally, I'm very much against direct entry captains in Susia, especially when the minimum requirement is just 200 hours on type. If you haven't flown in Indonesia before, you should ideally spend at least some time as a co-pilot whilst you adjust to this very unique and also hazardous flying environment. However, in regards to the website no longer advertising for first officers, well, there's no need to worry. In recent years, Suzy has gone to great efforts in recruiting more first officers of Indonesian nationality. Suzy is of course based in Indonesia, so that's fair. However, Suzy will never have enough Indonesian pilots to fill all of their vacancies, at least not in the foreseeable future. There's a shortage of flying schools in Indonesia and those pilots who do pass their training are usually sucked up by the larger airlines in Indonesia. Those larger airlines also have a chronic shortage of Indonesian pilots. Once Suzy Air finishes processing the Indonesian applicants, they will no doubt start to advertise for more first officers from other nationalities. However, in the meantime, there's nothing to stop you from simply applying to the email addresses provided on the website anyway. Personally, I wouldn't wait until the position is advertised again. Even if you only qualify as an FO, just apply now. So I'm going to be splitting this into three separate videos, there's simply too much information to cram into one single video. So this video is going to be explaining the application process itself, part two will explain their assessments with Aero Synergy and also why Suzy may be changing this process in the near future. And finally, part three will explain the final interview in Pangandaran. The specific requirements for a Suzy first officer changes from time to time. However, usually you'll just need a CPL and a single engine instrument rating. Of course, because it's a caravan, there's no need for any multi-engine qualifications. The flight time requirement changes from time to time, usually based upon the supply and demand of pilots. However, at a bare minimum, you're going to need at least 200 hours of flight time. Now, there are sometimes rumours which float around, claiming that Suzy will ban pilots of certain nationalities from joining the company. There is actually some truth in that, however that's usually a temporary ban when there are too many pilots of any one nationality already in Suzy Air. The management simply don't want to lose a large chunk of their workforce every time the airlines start recruiting back in the pilots home countries. It makes perfect sense from their point of view. There's also a common misconception that British pilots make up the majority of Suzy Air pilots. This misconception comes from the Channel 4 documentary Worst Place to Be a Pilot, which filmed predominantly British pilots whilst they were flying for Suzy Air. Now, the reason for this was simply because the documentary was targeted for a UK audience. However, in reality, Brits made up about 20% or so of the pilots in Suzy Air at the time of filming. Suzy Air has always had a very diverse workforce. Pretty much every single nation on this planet has at some point or another had a Suzy Air pilot. In regards to the age requirements, Suzy Air have in the past required pilots to be at least 23 years of age at the time of applying. 
However, exceptions have been made to this rule on occasions. In regards to the upper age limit, well, we've had a few pilots in the past who have joined as first officers when they're in the mid 50s. And in regards to gender, of course, both men and women can apply. So in regards to qualifications, nationalities, age and gender, pretty much any pilot can apply to SUSIA. However, there are other things which you need to think about before you apply, such as whether or not the SUSIA life is for you. For example, if you're married with kids, then probably not. In my last video, five reasons why you may love flying for SUSIA and five reasons why you may hate it, I go into a lot more detail regarding this. If you haven't seen that video already, you may want to watch that next. The career section of the SUSIA website lists all of the documents you need to start your application. Now the person who wrote this list appears to have left out something very important, which is of course a copy of your license. I'm assuming that this was a mistake, so personally I'd add a copy of this to your application. Another document which I'd also add to your application would be a cover letter. Again, it may not be listed, but common sense would suggest you send it anyway. Back when I first joined Susie in 2010, it was actually quite easy to get an interview. The reason being, of course, nobody had even heard of Suzier back then. However, ever since the documentary, Suzier has been flooded with applications from pilots all across the world. When I was in recruitment in 2014 and 2015, we were getting in excess of 1,000 applications each month. Now, that figure has decreased slightly since then. However, it's still unlikely that you'll get a response to your email, let alone a job. Now, if you want to improve your chances of being invited to the next stage of the recruitment process, which are the assessments with Aero Synergy, I'm going to offer you three pieces of advice. And I'm offering this advice based upon my own personal experience recruiting for Suzier and also my experience applying to other jobs with other airlines. During the initial application process, the first person to look at your CV won't even be a pilot. They'll most likely be from the HR department. They'll know very little when it comes to pilot qualifications and experience, and their understanding of the English language may also be questionable. However, they will be given very specific instructions from the training department regarding which applications to escalate to the next stage and which applications to just dismiss. With so many applications each month, they'll be acting as the filter. If they can't clearly see from your CV that you meet the minimum requirements within the first 20 seconds or so of them reading it, then most likely your application will be deleted from the system. The same also applies if there are any missing documents from your application. They have a lot of other applications which they need to go through. They simply aren't going to waste their time on you. Now it may sound blunt, however, that's the reality of it and the same also applies with most other companies. So here's a sample of what a pilot CV should look like. Note that all of the really important information regarding qualifications and flying hours are located in the top one third of the page. Make sure that you write current CPL, instrument rating and class one medical in a large bold font. The HR staff will recognize these keywords. If they don't clearly see this written on your CV, you won't get anywhere. Your total flight hour should also be written in a large, bold font, together with any caravan time that you may have. Underneath this, you can then break down your flying hours, including hours flown in the last 6 and 12 months. This is also a requirement from Suzy Air. Everything else can be saved for the lower two thirds of the page. However, make sure there is just one page. I have nearly 15 years of flying experience myself and I can still fit everything on one page. We really don't want to bore them with our life stories or statements such as I work well in the team. Just stick to the important facts and figures. Now, one of the problems that Susie has faced in the past was getting enough applicants to actually attend the interviews. 
This may sound a bit ridiculous given the sheer volume of applications that they received, however most of the successful applicants failed to reply back to the interview invitations. The servers of Suzia are based in Indonesia and as a result you can almost guarantee that any emails that they send you will be marked as spam. This even happens when you mark previous Suzia emails as not spam. Ideally, you should be checking your junk email at least a few times a week. There are no doubt hundreds of pilots who in the past have missed out on a life-changing opportunity with Susia for this very reason. Finally, if you haven't received any news from Susia within a month of your first application, apply again. And when I say apply again, I mean send all of the documents they did the first time. It's quite possible that your application was deleted the first time around, possibly as a mistake or possibly because you are missing important information from your application. So make sure to double check that your CV is clear and that all necessary documents are attached and clearly labelled to your email. Even if your application wasn't deleted the first time, it still makes sense to reapply each month. Eventually, the HR staff will begin to recognize your name. If you catch their attention, they're more likely to escalate your application to the next stage, or at the very least, email you back with information on when they'll be recruiting again. So to summarize this video, always be careful how you lay out your CV, because if it's not clear, then ultimately it's just going to be deleted from the system. Always make sure that you check your junk mail, and finally, also make sure that you reapply every single month. This concludes part one of how to get a job with Susia. If you found this video useful, please do like and subscribe. If you'd like to fly for Susia and want to know more about what it's like, then please also consider buying my book, Papa Kilo, A True Story of a Suzy Air Pilot in Indonesia. I'll be uploading the next video shortly. This video will not only explain the assessment process at Aero Synergy, but will also explain why Suzy Air may be changing this process in the near future. It's definitely worth watching. In the meantime, thanks for watching.